Welcome to About Yahweh's Business, His Church with His Truth. Today we're going to go over life and death. Che, life, choose life. Many times, I'm sure we've all heard that we pray for things, we ask for things, and then we hear a preacher or pastor say, well, they're going to die anyway, or someone along the lines. That is not choosing life. That is not speaking life. The scripture says we have the power in our tongue that comes out of our mouth to speak life or to speak death. Therefore, I would be very careful of how we speak and what we speak of. Because when we leave out of a hospital praying for someone or we leave out, of course, the enemy's going to say, well, gee, they're doomed. Did you see how sick they are? Did you see this? Did you see that? Did you see this? And what's going to happen? If we're not careful, we put that into our little computer and our little computer says, hey, that's the right choice. They are old. They are sick. They are this. They are that. And before you know it, we done convinced ourselves of why did we come and pray for them. So we have to be careful when we don't choose life. Romans 5 and 12. Therefore, just as sin came into the world through one man, and death through sin, and so death spread to all men because all sinned. Death is here because of sin. There's a lot of people that have a lot of beliefs, but sin is not gone away. Therefore, we see we're still in the biblical realm. We're still in what the scripture says because it basically tells us that people are dying, then we don't know the Shelleyim. We don't know the heavens. We don't know we're not in the reign of the Mashiach. So it, it pretty much tells us right here, because of that sin, we inherited sin. So what do we need to do? Just like anything else, when you run out of gas, you go get some gas. Hopefully you get gas before you run out. So the same concept in a way, before we run out of this life, before we run out, before we're alongside the road, and everybody's weeping and crying and saying how great that person is and all this. Was we? You know, I would submit to you if half the people was half as good as what these people get up and say they are at their funeral, they probably wouldn't have a problem. You know, I'm sure we've all heard it. They get up and they say, oh, they did this and they did that and they was in the Army and they was in the Navy and they was in the Marines and they did all these things and they was a practice softball coach for 20 years and they helped the needy and, and make them sound like a saint while people are sitting there poking each other making funny faces and going are they talking about the same person? Am I at the right funeral? Because the person I knew was not that nice. Wasn't that easy going? Wasn't that right? When you think back into the live and you're thinking of them it's usually not the same thing that they're scooping there. And that, that's a sad thing. John 3.16 For Elohim so loved the world that he gave his only Son that whosoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life. Folks, we use this way too openly. The Baptists particularly, some of these churches, I mean, that's their salvation that's their bible that's their whole entire religion is he gave but if you open that up just a little bit further it don't take much to get to acts 238 it don't take much to get to the whole religious world that's basically saying the same thing as i ain't gonna do anything it's all solved at the cross but nowhere and I mean, nowhere do we see this, right? And loving, beloved, it's not condemning. It's showing us what we have to do to find life. How do we get to life? How do we change? Because we see in Romans that we are death, and we're going to run into death, and we're going to run into sinful death, which that only takes us one place, to hell. 
Now, people say, well, this hell and this and... But hell is real. Yeshua spoke of welling and gnashing of teeth. You don't do welling and gnashing of teeth in the grave. Have you ever walked by a grave and hear people hollering and screaming? Have you ever heard their teeth chattering? After a funeral, have you heard somebody screaming, get me out of here, and their teeth chattering? We don't hear this. We have to take some of these scriptures literally. If Yeshua was a part of the disciples and sat at the table, he told them, yes, he spoke in parables. Yes, he told them. But he also said, it's for us to know. For us to act like we don't know what he's talking about, we're no different than the world. We're no different than the Pharisees who thought they had it all figured out, who claimed to be more righteous than any, and here we sit, lost. If we're not careful, we're not speaking life, we're not showing life, we're not even using the scriptures divided correctly. We're just taking what we want. Why? Because... When we come to this sin and death and judgment, we want to be that funeral director that's talking about, man, that was a great guy. But, but really in judgment, we're going to be judged. If we judge ourselves now, if we speak life now, then when it comes to judgment, what are we going to be held accountable for? Well, you spoke a lot of life. You helped a lot of people. You showed the truth. You did these isn't that what we really want to hear instead of we gave somebody something on the street corner back in 1927, back in 1971, back in 2001? And that's the problem with a lot of our elderly folks. They've done everything way back when, but what about today? He said he is an Elohim of the living, not the dead. So as long as we're living, we're doing something. We're promoting the kingdom. We're talking about life. And even into death, instead of this boo-hooing, bedside, crying and salvation nonsense, we should be ready. We should be knowing. That should not be the problem. Now, the separation ain't going to see you for a thousand years or how many years or whatever that's understandable death itself is not a kind thing but if we realize according to scriptures we're not dying we're eternal speaking life speaking life we are eternal and your soul is eternal your flesh may fall apart it may fall off it may go into the ground but the eternal the essence your soul who you are is eternal that means, just like it says, upon death, you're going to your creator. And your creator is going to say, well done, thou good and faithful servant. And that servant has a whole lot of characteristics to it, I would say. Or he's going to say, depart from me, I never knew you. And sadly, it says, not my words, Yeshua, the word Yahweh says what? Many will say to me in that day. Many will say to me. Matthew 7, read it. Many will say to me in that day. Exodus 20 and 13, you shall not murder. We cannot, should not, should very well not murder. And when I say murder, I mean talking of each other, talking ill of each other, even their continents of how you feel, right? In social media anymore, it's horrible because we get on there and we see something and we immediately put our thoughts of what we think, right? So I post, doggy is bad, and then somebody says, well, doggy looks good, and, and on and on and on it goes, and there's 160 comments about the little Dutch hound dog. Are you put on there, repent. Who you tell me to repent? And 150 comments on, don't tell me to repent. I know. and the, and But we don't understand the person behind that. 
The problem with this social media is you don't know what their day is going through. To speak life to somebody, maybe this is the last post in their mind they're ever, ever, ever going to do. And we see it all over. I'm done with social media. I'm done with it. I'm done with it. I'm done with it. I'm never coming back. And it's because they say they're just done with all the comments. They're, so obviously there's not a lot of life being spoke on there. And it's almost the chaotic of why we want to get on it anymore. Do you really want to get on Facebook, YouTube, and all these social media things because you want to have your day cheered up? Is it because you want to hear a word? How many times do we get on YouTube to find a word of life, to find a word of truth, to find Yahweh, His name, His life? What, what's going on? Or do we find it usually for entertainment? And in most cases, sadly, it, we look up what we want to hear. We look up Kadosh in our language of Kadosh. We look up Keshe in what we already know it is. We just need some reformation. We need some reformation because that's what we was taught. Sadly, a lot of these building churches, pastors, and loving kindly as I can possibly say it, has taught us so incorrectly that we are so miscombobulated up and down, backwards and sideways, we're full of chaos and we don't even know it. We think, well, I can do all things, and we don't read the rest of it. We don't read what he says. We don't read what his will is, and when we're going through something, we think we've been deserted. Let's be honest. Let's be truthful. If you've ever been through hard times and hard things, you're feeling like this doesn't work. Right? For all these Christians, for all these people that have been in church for 40 years and they're in the hospital, their thought is whether they're ever going to tell you or not, this didn't work out for me. I've been betrayed. It's not working. It, it's something wrong. Something is definitely wrong because what I've been taught and told, how you in the hospital? I mean, it's just common sense. Let's get, I don't understand why we go from the church building to the school building. In the school building, we can say two plus two is four. One, two, three, four. But we go to the church building and we say this plus this equals I'm perfect and I'm never going to die and everything's going to be fine. And then when something happens, it had to be been sin. It had to be been this. And now we're searching our life thoroughly to find sin. And maybe that's what needs to happen. But maybe it's because we didn't speak life. Maybe we said, I can't, I won't, I will not. Is that life? Hey, go out and get me the newspaper. I can't, I won't. Be careful of these words because he might make you in a position, he might put you in a position where you're going to be begging. You wish you could have went out to get the paper. You wished all these can'ts, all this new age generational garbage. I can't, I won't, I don't have to, I don't want to, it just doesn't matter, it doesn't pertain to me, and all this junk is not life. You can't turn around and say, I can do all things through the Messiah who strengthens me, and then say, I can't go take out the garbage, I can't clean up my room, I can't go to town, I can't make it. We are supposed to be believers and we're full of more I can'ts than what the world says. Hey, Friday night, 8.30, be there, done that. A week ahead of time, they ain't, they ain't asking, they ain't begging, they ain't telling. They're saying, hey, it's date and time. Date and time. That's all we need. Oh, I don't know if I can make it to service. You know, it's three months from now. I don't know. You know, I'm going through some things. It's three months from now. Yeah, but man... The faith and the hope and the life says, Yahweh willing, I'm going to be there. Yahweh willing, he's going to get me through this. Yahweh willing, we're going to be there and we're going to be healthy. And it's glorifying the king. Not what I've done, not what you've done, not what some doctor's done. Yahweh has brought me through it in the way that he sees fit. We, we read verses that 
The ways of Yahweh are mysterious. The ways of Yahweh is not our ways. And we get ourselves into positions and we just don't understand it. Why am I at the hospital? I don't belong at the hospital. Why am I here? Why is this happening? Why am I sick? Why are these things happening to me? And we don't understand because it's not our ways. Maybe if we would have spoke life in the beginning, we wouldn't be in this situation. Maybe he's trying to show us if you would speak life and stop with I can't, I won't, I ain't gonna. Now you have to. Now you absolutely have to walk this way. So a lot of people, and you know, we're not taught these things. We're taught that everything is a choice. Everything is just kind of happen chance. I mean, it depends on where you go to church and who you're taught by. But a lot of churchianity is just straight terribleism. We, we John three sixteen and this and that, it's taking things out of concept. I can do all things through the Mashiach who strengthens me under His will, in His willing. What helps not only me but others. And some of the things we've just went through, it can only help others. And if nobody else will do it, watch what you say. Here I am. We sang them songs. Here I am, send me. Here I am, send me. Well, you're going to have to go to Oregon and do this. What? I can't got the money. I ain't got the funds. I ain't got the... And there's our list of why we can't do anything. But we're singing songs. Send me. Oh, here I am. Send me. But we don't want to do nothing. Wouldn't that sound like insanity if you went to somebody's front room and you said, Hey! Can you come out and help me change my tire? And they said, yes, here I am. Send me. And then you walked out there and you started doing it and they never came outside. And you went back inside and you said, hey, you just said you was going to help me. Come on out here. Well, you know, I said that, but you expect me to get up? It's hot outside. You know how hot it is out there? Do you know I might get my hands dirty? I, I, I'm watching TV. I mean, the game shows are on. Uh, you know, this is, this is episode 127 of, uh, you know, Alex Trebek, and I may never see this again, so when, if you're still, if you're still out there when this goes off, I'll come help you. Ain't that the way we live? Ain't that sadly what we will do? And convince ourselves that's fine and dandy. But when we do it to the Creator, He don't expect us to lie. He really don't expect that vow to be such a common wealth, just a common word. Oh, I'm in sick and I'm in hospital and I'll do anything. And oh, my life's in turmoil. And oh, and boy, we'll say anything to get us out of it. Right? Anything to get out of it. Out of jail, I'll do anything. Anything, anything, anything. And as soon as people get out of jail, what do they do? As soon as they get out of drug rehab, what do some do? Why does this stuff not work? Because we're not taught how to deal with it. What makes it work? I mean, there's billboards anymore. There's, there's programs that people say, basically, he does it all. But that's not true. If you've ever been a part of a prison, a alcoholic, a drug, he, he don't do it all. You have to not do it. Now, he will help you. If you want to quit smoking, quit drinking, he will help you. But if you pick up your hand and you grab a bottle or you grab something and you do it, you're doing it. And this is a concept so many people I've seen as of lately as well, they don't understand. Their, their programs are deathly wrong because they're teaching people that if you stay in a bubble then that bubble keeps you from harm. But it doesn't because you got to be in the world. And you're in the world. And these people are in the world. And when they see somebody ask them for something and, and come up with these same things, that they have a problem with it. And then they're cross and they're this and they're that. It doesn't work. Right? 
it, it fails because they are not equipped. They are not equipped with, you pray about it. You have to pray about it sometimes when they're talking to you. If somebody comes up and says, hey, do you want something to drink? Do you want this dope? Do you want this? You say no. And even if you have to pray and talk with the Creator, that's what's going to work. But trying to turn and, and, and act like that they don't even want it. Some of these people are not even sold out that they don't want it. There's the problem. There's the nipping in the bud problem. Is You have to be sold out. You have to be convinced. You have to have the relationship that you're even going to call on the Creator. And you have to sell out and not want it. If you're wanting it, as soon as somebody gets it around you, you're going you're gonna to do it, right? If you want the drugs and alcohol, as soon as somebody picks up anything and says, here you go, you've been wanting it for months. It, it's not the program, and people blame it on the programs or the this or the that. It's not the program. It's the creator. It's the relationship. It's you personally speaking live. And there's too many nonsensical things a part of these programs because they talk about being a panda, being an otter, being a this. I mean, a lot of these things are not a fundamental basis. It's something to do, but it's not choosing life. It's not finding the foundation. And I would submit to you that's why so many fail. That's why so many of these people in these women's homes and, and men's homes and different things that they fail because their foundation is not upon the scriptures. It's not upon life. It's upon a, a thought process of on day one, I have to do this. And day two and six months later, maybe if you're really, really, really good enough, then you can deny to have that. But day one, you give it to the Creator. And at day one, you're changing your life. And that's why a lot of these Christian, and I hate to even put it that way, but why a lot of these so-called Christian programs don't work because they're not really essentially upon the Creator. They're upon a program. This is what we're going to do. This is the 12 steps. These are the five steps. These are the three. And they're trying to get you somewhere that most people don't want to get to. Where what we have to start with, what works better than anything, is Father Yahweh help me today. Not six months from now. Not where I'm going to be. Today I need help and to change the mind and to choose life. But they have to understand it is life. They don't understand they're destroying not only their own life, their children's life. A lot of these people have children and they're getting away from their children for a program that essentially is not rooted with what they think it is. So it's almost a deception in, in the inner working foundations because the program itself Overall, it's pretty much a failure. One in ten makes it. Well, that's not good. One in ten after six months will make it. That's that's not good eye. You know, if you went to a doctor and he said you got cancer, but one in ten will live with me, you'd probably be like, <laughs> one in ten? How many patients you got? Well, right now, ten. You'd probably leave and say, I need to find some better odds. I'm, I'm not, we're not playing, we're not gambling with my life. But essentially, a lot of these people are rolling the dice with programs that stamp as Christians. And what's sad, again, I hate to even put it that way, but the program itself is not a working, valuable program because it's not about the Creator. It's about what you can do in the program and how the program shelters you. But all through scriptures, we don't see that. We see... Daniel in the lion's den. We see, you know, these people are fighting and working it out at the same time. 
You don't think Daniel might have had a thought? You don't think one of the enemies or one of the demonics ever put it in Daniel's ear that he was going to get eaten alive? You don't think he could have been kicking and screaming and hollering? The life and knowing the life and putting it on the Creator is exactly that. It's saying, Father, you know what's best. And that's a hard thing to even comprehend. And even when we are think we know something, you know, even when we think we're, it's not a salvation issue, so to speak. It's we're walking down the road and we've been walking the road and we think everything's going pretty good. And then something happens and we just are blindsided because we never seen it coming. It should never happen to me. And then through that process, how do we figure it out? What went wrong? And for most people that are intelligent in scriptures, the first thing they're going to do is hit their knees and say, where did I go wrong? What did I do? And in some cases, it is a repentive. But in some cases, you have to walk out and you're more tested in this than when everything's great. Everything's great. It's easy to be a Christian. It's easy to be a believer, isn't it? When you're on top of the world and uh, and everything's taken care of and the lights are on and everything you're eating, you're like, yeah, yeah, you know what? Everything's awesome. But when everything starts falling apart, it's like, now you start reading your resume. <laughs> you read your resume to the Creator, right? Now, Father, <laughs> I'm a Sabbath keeper. Father, I and now we start reading our resume and and trying to get some kudos for what we've done because I I I I know I'm not perfect, but you know I, I try to keep the Sabbath. I try to do this, and we're trying to give him a resume of Father, what what's going on? Sometimes we have to listen. Sometimes we have to go through it, and sometimes we find out who we are and what our life is about and what we're going to do because we haven't been taught it's your life choose life and even unto death choose life what kind of a our, our messiah showed us on the stake father forgive them what kind of a message is that for somebody to be on their deathbed saying, I forgive you all, instead of, I wish back in 19, I, you and you and you, and I always wanted to tell you, and how many people, when they get older, they get more grudgeful. They get more open to tell you what is on their mind, instead of the opposite. It seems like it should be the opposite of being more loving, more kind, and speaking more life, instead of, you look older with a beard. You'd look like, what? You know, some of these things these, that people will say because they figure they ain't got nothing to lose. It's like, wow, you know, I, I can't believe that you would say these things at that point in time. It seems like you would be trying to draw closer to your creator. But I would believe a lot of that, again, is life, knowing life, knowing what we need to go to. 2 Timothy 3 and 15, And how from childhood you have been acquainted with the sacred writings, which are able to make you wise for salvation through the Mashiach, Yeshua. Now, from childhood, I think a lot of us realize we was different from childhood. We have been different, and we didn't always know why. We haven't always felt why. We don't like to go out in the public. We don't like to talk with others. We'd rather be left alone. And I think we don't really understand that. Again, because nobody expressed life to us. Nobody told us that was the way what we was and what was going on. Because the true scriptures, we only hear about Jonah and this and this and that. And all the good things that are supposed to happen. And we don't realize when we have to walk through things that are not that great. And even when we hear these stories, we don't get the concept. Daniel was in the lion's den. Jonah was in the belly of a big fish. It sounds pretty simple and easy. 
But if you spent three days in that, it wouldn't be very simple and easy. If you spent one night with lions, would you... Hours now, not just a minute. It ain't like he was thrown in and they said, ha ha, and then picked him back up with a rope. He stayed there with these hungry lions. Sometimes that hungry lions is what gets us to know we either failed or we passed. Oh, my humble servant. Yeshua said what? How he would have protected them. How he would have helped them. How he wanted to go and heal them, but he couldn't because of what their attitudes. Because they wouldn't have it so. Well, if we know that happened now, Yahweh forgive us for ever being in the way of somebody else being healed, somebody else being touched, somebody else knowing the Creator. And sometimes that's all we got to do. Sometimes we're the only ones. We have to understand as believers, we don't get the whole process that maybe walking through M.D. Anderson is humiliating and downing and you just want to cry for the seem like mile walk it's almost like to me honestly it's like a walk of shame when you first get it's like I'm just being honest it's like I must have failed miserably at what I'm doing I must have just failed because of why am I here if I was a success I wouldn't be here but then if they see this and they see this, and they see the seat seats, and they ask about them. And if one person, think about it, if one person says, what is that? And you tell them that is Yahweh in Paleo-Hebrew. That is your God's name. That is should be your God's name. Just that 30-second conversation. If they take that and treat it and turn it into life, it's not a failure. To the world... To anybody watching, that was that guy right there must have done something horrible. I mean, look at Job, and not even put myself in the same category, but look at how they treated him. Man, you must have messed up. You must have really done something bad. You must have did things just terrible. Just repent. Just repent and die. Just, you know. How many times do those same expressions and thoughts come to us and we think it's all... But what did the Messiah say? He'll leave the 99 to go for the one. So what about us? We want life. We want to help others. We say we want to do all these things. We say, Father, send me. And then when he sends us, because I submit... And I'm telling you from personal experience, I would submit it's because we was taught wrong. Nobody ever said from a child, this is your life. You're set apart. You're going to be different. You're going to do things that nobody else is going to do because he made you that way. I won't ever put more upon you than you can take. Sometimes we think it's more than we can take. Sometimes we want to play that card and say, Father, <laughs> this, this is more than... But it's not. He ain't going to let you take. He's not going to let you do more than what you can take. He's not going to put more upon you. And sometimes, sadly, it's not till you are coming out that you realize, wow, how many people have been touched? How many people know? And again, it's not for us to take them to the altar and throw them down and immerse them and, and go through the process. It's, do you know the Creator? And when you're in that lion's den, when you're in that cancer place, when you're in these places, you may not feel the best. You might think that lion's going to come bite your hand off. You might have a thought that th this is just all kinds of thoughts, but the enemy is there. If we see the Messiah, think about it. The Messiah had to deal with the enemy. Can you imagine? He probably could have just slapped him across the earth, right? He probably could have just thrown him away. But yet he showed us, well, if you're really the son of man, turn this into... Now in our mentality, what would we have done? If we knew we had the power to 
scoop him up and dunk him like a basketball, what would we have done? Come here, let me talk to you for a second, and let me show you. But it's not always about power. It's not always about, it's about what can you make it through. What will you go through? This life, one way or another, I would submit to you, is like a test. It's a testing ground. It's a it's a point of, are you worthy to make it in? Are you a good and humble servant? And sometimes these things are the most humbling things. You know, the person I am now is not the person I was two years ago. Just not. Just the humbleness, the, the all that can happen to me. You know, I'll never be thrown in the lion's den. This is never going to happen this way because I believe. But it's not because you believe. It's not because it's a terrible, terrible thing. Sometimes it's something that you have to walk through. Who is your God? Who do you choose? He says, I'll be your Elohim. And you'll be my children. You'll be my people. But sometimes that choice has to be made. And sadly, I think there's a lot of people that have chosen other gods. Their doctors are their gods. They're this. In between there, they choose, I'm going to cling to this man. I'm going to cling to this. And they forget that the ending, no matter whether it's here or 100 years or 50 years from now, I'm going to have to face the Creator. And for my actions, for what comes out of my mouth, what I say and do, I'm going to be held accountable for and not only is it me, everybody in this room. So when we go to the gates of hell, it shall not prevail against thee. So this life, even when we are pressed up against it, the gates of hell, and it seems like there's no way out, maybe the Creator put you there to prove that there's my servant. There's my servant. And as long as she doesn't lose her faith, as long as she doesn't lose that faith, by his stripes we're healed, but by your faith, woman, you was healed. Right? The woman was healed, he said, because of her faith. So as long as you never lose the faith, you're healing. A month, a year, two, three. Sure, the longer it goes on, but as long as the faith stays. And how much more, he says, put our treasures in heaven. How much more treasures, how much more will we have walking through that, humbling ourselves and saying, you know, I touched 10 people. Well, in two years, 10 people. And again, it's not, we don't have to send them the salvation row and bring them an altar and beat them down and hit them with the Bible and make them. It's just, here's the creator. Here's an option. Here's the way. And I'm telling you, it's life. And even into death, this is life. It's eternal life. It's something unmeasurable. Right? It, it's something unmeasurable to figure this life an eternal life. No more sick. No more death. No more tears. No more eternal life. Which brings me to the scripture that he says, what? Those who want this life, those who won't give up this life, but those who do give up this life, those who will, and I'm paraphrasing, those who don't worry about this life will gain the eternal life. And I know that's a hard saying. I know that's, it, it's not an easy walk through. But again, when we go back to Daniel, Job, and these others, it, it wasn't an easy walk through for them. A couple more scriptures and we'll call it. Galatians 2 and 20. I have been crucified with the Messiah. It is no longer I who live, but the Mashiach who lives in me. And the life I now live in the flesh, I live by faith in the Son of Elohim who loved me and gave himself for me. If we say he gave himself for us, and we believe the scriptures. And we know when we repent, when we come to the stake, when we come to there, we are saying, it's all yours. 
It's all yours. I am yours. My life is now yours. Whatever you will, I'll do. We have to understand that's a mouthful. That's a life full. That's more than just a happy time. I, I think a lot of people lose their salvation, honestly, over prayers, over saying it's all going to be better, over being taught incorrectly of they think it's said and done right there. And then when they got to go to the hospital, when they got to go to the doctor, when they lose their mom, when they lose their brother, it's like this doesn't work out the way they told me. And I, and I'd submit you that's why the world does what the world does. That's why they get drunk and they go on drugs and they go because they don't want to, admittedly, out of their own mouth, can't deal with it. Just can't deal with it. That's why I do what I do. Because they thought, and some of these people are Christians, converts, believers, or used to been believers, and they thought it was all going to be all right until something happened. And when that something happened, and we all know one way or another it's gone to, you know, there's no more December 25th days like when you was five. It's just not going to be ever that way the same again. So why would you support it? So when we go and we have these days not knowing life, not knowing what our words and our actions are when we come and we repent and not knowing we're basically picking up our stake and we're saying, I'll be crucified for you. I'll be spit upon for you. I'll do whatever it takes for you because I want to obtain eternal life and I want to show the world that I love you so much that I won't stop. And we all know we can deny him, we can fall, we can be knocked down. That's sin, right? That's disobedience. That's, Father, forgive me. And when we walk away, even for a moment, as long as we come back, as long as we hang on to him, as long as we grab them seat seats and say, Father, forgive me. You're dragging me down the street, but please don't leave me here. Please don't leave me here. I messed up, and I, I had terrible thoughts and bad thoughts and spoke ill and, and done all these bad things, but please, the eternal life is what it's about. That's the goal. That's what we're really searching for. It's what we should be searching for. If we're not... That's why a lot of these things fail. They're, the end goal is not the same. The end goal for, again, going back to drugs and, and alcohol and, and smoking and all these things, the end goal is just different. The end goal is to hopefully stop. Or, or even what I hate is hearing people say, you're always an alcoholic. No, you're not. You're not. You're not always alcoholic. You're not always... A, you're not. You're you're striving your best to be perfect. No matter what you drunk or did yesterday, you're going to lay that back down and you're going to give that back up and you're going to say, Father, help me. What's that one thing? Help me help my stupid self, right? I mean, help me. Because even Paul said this, right? That he, he does the things that he, he don't want to do and how many times we find ourselves doing these things? You're doing some things and you just, why did I do that? Why did I say that? But if we glean and learn from it. In closing, Luke 16, 19. There was a rich man who was clothed in purple and fine linen, who feasted sumptuously every day. And at his gate was laid a poor man named Lazarus, covered with sores, who desired to be fed with what fell from the rich man's table. He desired to be fed with what fell from the rich man's table. He desired just the, the crumbs, what came off of his table. And it was probably more than crumbs, right? Moreover, even the dogs came and licked his sores. The poor man died and was carried by the angels to Abraham's side. The rich man also died and was buried. And in Hades... Being torment, he lifted up his eyes and saw Abraham far off and Lazarus at his side. That's it in a nutshell, folks. I mean, that even if we have the world, but we lose our soul, what did we gain? 
70 years, 80 years, 120 years, the promised 120 years, I had it all, compared to eternity? I'm sure when this is all said and done, and I'm sure those ones who went before us are probably laughing and thinking those 70 years, those 80 years, wasn't nothing compared to, you know, and some of the darkest, cancerous, horrible times. People lived through the plagues and through Nazi Germany and was hunted and, and all the things that they had to deal through. Even back then, right? Look at look at Moshe. All those things that they had to deal with, but to eternity, what's a couple years of sickness? What's a couple days of sickness? What's a couple things knowing and holding on to that faith that, yeah, I might be sick here, but he's going to give me a body that's everlasting. He's going to give to me so much treasures that it's going to be in awe. We're going to be in awe. We're going to look and, and be in awe. And we think this is beautiful. Think about that. What we have here, and this ain't nothing compared to the Garden of Eden. If you're doing any studies, they, some of the things that they said and some of the things that they ate was humongous, I believe. It was... It, and probably the taste and everything. You know, we eat some strawberries or some watermelon. We think, man, that's good. Imagine what it really, the rich, the richness of it. The land of what? Milk and honey. He knows what's best for us. But that's not saying he won't put us through something. And in closing, leave you with one last thought. Our children that do what they do, Sometimes that we go wayward and we have went astray and done these things. We just pray for them. We just give it to Yahweh. And they know your job is completed in most cases. Whether we we don't want to hear, we don't want to hear, we don't want to hear it. But, but if you told them the truth, if you gave them the scriptures, if you did what you know you could do, that's all we can do. It's all. It's heartbreaking. It's nerve wracking. It's terrible to watch somebody torpedo themselves, so to speak. But it seems like they have to walk through that. And sometimes we have to walk what we had to walk through to get to where we are. We wouldn't be who we was without seeing those heartaches. And sometimes it's the heartaches and the, it's the bad mistakes that you know. And we just pray that Yahweh don't let. Terrible things happen, crippling things, and, and terrible things happen. But sometimes they have to go through that to realize the richness of Yahweh, the the totalness and the protection and all those things that they have. And I believe they're still, you know, it says they will not beg. They're never going to be beggars because of your righteousness, because what we are doing, those will never beg. So as long as you keep on the path, you're protecting them the best way you can. You're, you're providing that they will never have to beg for anything. They will never become beggars. They will never be like this one here, which, you know, we could do a whole sermon on how he ended up there and, and what that became. But, you know, we just have to keep walking the path and trusting in Yahweh that he will touch them, he will protect them, and he will keep them by his side. But the best thing we can do for him is stay shalom and happy as we possibly can. And sometimes that's a hard walk itself to not say, hey, <laughs> what's wrong with you? Wake up, right? But sometimes the young, you know, just like when we was young, sometimes we didn't listen. We didn't want to hear it. We we knew what was the best way. So I'll leave you with that. You know, but don't lose faith. Don't lose hope. Keep your head up and keep looking. The redemption is nigh. So until next time, thank you very much for watching, for listening. Until next time, may Yahweh bless you. May his continent shine upon you. And may he grant you shalom. Shalom and thank you very much. If you need anything, if you need any prayer, if you need any help, if you just want someone to talk to. I know these dates and times seems like just having a friend. 
you know, and, and Yahweh bless those that it seems like we're so isolated to begin with. It seems like we're just so off on our own island to begin with. And then when we start finding sickness and problems and things and, and we don't want to admit them, I don't, you know, I don't want to admit that this is going wrong. It, it, it almost seems like, well, you know, it's like I'm, I'm admitting my faith has failed. I'm admitting, you know, but it's not like that. You're not admitting anything. You're just admitting you're human and you need some help. And we was made to love one another. We're made to bear those burdens. So, by all means, again, if you need anything, prayer, just a word, like to talk, then get a hold. Shalom. May Yahweh bless you. Yahweh's love to you all. Shalom.